In this video, we're going to look at three practice problems that involve uh, solubility. Uh, the first two are going to look the first two that we're going to look at are going to involve content from chapter 16 and um, specifically uh, how acids and bases and the material that we learned in chapter 16 can affect solubility. Uh, the, th the third example is just going to be a, a question that will look like one that might be on the exam, but is from chapter 17 alone. So in the first problem, it says um, a 50 mil solution of 0.1 molar acetic acid is titrated with 22.5 mils of a 0.16 molar solution of NaOH. Then it says calculate the, sol the molar solubility of chromium hydroxide in the solution if the KSP for chromium hydroxide is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 30. So um, for this problem, we're looking to try to figure out how soluble chromium hydroxide is in a solution where we're also where we also did a titration to start. So chromium hydroxide, when it dissolves, we get chromium three plus plus three OH minus. And so the KSP expression is going to be KSP is equal to the concentration of chromium three plus times the concentration of OH minus cubed. And if we create an ice table, Uh, we know that our concentration of chromium 3 plus is going to start with zero molar because um, there's nothing in this problem that says anything about there being um, an initial concentration of the chromium 3 plus. However, the problem with this, this question is we don't know what the OH minus concentration is. The only way we can, we can get that is by looking at that titration because we know that at any, at any point in the titration we can calculate the pH or the pOH and therefore the H3O plus or the OH minus concentration. So in this case what we're doing is, is we're reacting HA plus OH minus and we're getting A minus plus H2O. Um, and now what we have to do is we have to set up our limiting reagent table to see uh, whether the acid is the limiting reagent or the base is the limiting reagent. So if you calculate the number of moles of acid you get 0 0.0050 moles. And you get that from multiplying 50 mils by 0.1 molar. And then the OH minus solution, uh, the OH minus concentration, you're, I'm sorry, the moles of OH minus we're going to get by multiplying the 22.5 mils times the 0.16 molar solution of OH minus. And you get for that one 0 0.0036 moles. And since at the beginning of the titration we don't have any minus around already, the problem just starts with acid and base. Uh, we start with zero moles of A minus. So it's pretty easy to see that our limiting reagent is going to be the OH minus in this case. It's the one with the fewer moles. So if we subtract that away, we get zero moles of the base. And then if we subtract the base from our other starting reagent, we get 0 0.0014 moles. Now on the right side of the equation, we have to add, because this is a product, so we get 0 0.0036 moles. So automatically, you know from this limiting reagent table that what we have is a buffer. Um, the way I know that is because we have A minus and HA in solution together. So we can go right to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH is equal to pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. And then what we can do is we can start to plug in. So if you calculate your pKa, that's 4.74. And you do that by taking the negative log of the Ka. And then we can plug in our then we can plug in our um, concentrations of the A minus and the HA. Now we don't even need concentrations in this case because we have the number of moles and since the volume is the same for both since they're in the same solution we can eliminate it um, because it'll divide out and we can just put in the number of moles. So what we can do is we can say the log of 0 0.0036 moles divided by the log of 0 0.0014 moles. So if you do your math, the calcu if, you do, if you calculate the pH from that, you get 5.15, which we can then convert to a pOH, which is equal to 8.85. And then if you calculate a concentration of OH minus, this is going to equal 1.43 times 10 to the minus 9. molar. 
So um, I'm kind of going a little fast here because we did this in chapter 16, but the way that you would convert from pH to pOH would be to subtract the 5.15 from 14, and then we would take 10 to the negative 8.85 to get the concentration of OH minus. Now that we have the concentration of OH minus, this can go into our ice table up here. And then we start to follow our ice table rules. So we're going to add plus x and plus 3x, and I get that from the stoichiometry above. And we get x, and we get 1.43 times 10 to the minus 9 molar um, plus 3x. So when we go to plug this into the KSP expression, KSP is going to equal 1.6 times 10 to the minus 30, which is going to equal x times 1.43 times... 10 to the minus 9 plus 3x cubed. Yeah, don't forget that cubed up there. So now this looks a little bit tough because the problem here is we got this 3x, which is going to make us have to use a complicated set of equations to figure this out. What we're going to do is we're actually, we can remove this by the approximation. So what, you see, what you'll notice is that the 1.43 times 10 to the minus 9 is much, much larger than this 1.6 times 10 to the minus 30. So we can assume that that 3x is going to be negligible um, relative to that 1.43 times 10 to the minus 9. So if we rewrite that with the assumption, we get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 30 is equal to x times 1.43 times 10 to the minus 9 to the third. And then if we solve for x, we get x is equal to 5.47 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. So what you can see is that we have basically an acid-base problem over here on the right, which then feeds into a solubility problem. And this type of sol solubility problem is a common ion effect problem. But in particular, this one is one where the common ion is a hydroxide. So it's actually the effect of pH or pOH on the um, solubility. In the second practice problem for the exam, we have another example where we're going to be taking something from chapter 16 and looking at uh, how a weak acid uh, can affect the solubility of a compound. So in this case, it gives us two reactions. It says um, that we have hydrofluoric acid, which can react with water to make H3O plus and F minus. So this is a standard Ka uh, weak acid equilibrium. We get a Ka for that. And then it says that calcium fluoride um, dissolves, making calcium 2 plus and 2F minus. So this is a weakly soluble salt. And um, we get a Ksp equal to 3.4 times 10 to the minus 10. Now, one thing you should notice is that there's a common ion here. Um, we have F minus in the first equation, and we have F minus in the second equation. So now it says solid calcium chloride is added to 355 mils of 0 0.060 molar solution of HF. How many milligrams of calcium chloride must be added for a precipitate to form? Assume the volume does not change upon adding the solid. Okay, so let's start dissecting this. So this is a problem where we're basically, it's, it's starting to set up like a fractional precipitation. We're saying how much calcium 2 plus can we add before we'll get a precipitate to form? So when we write our KSP expression for the calcium fluoride, we're going to get the KSP expression is equal to calcium 2 plus times concentration of F minus squared. And what it's saying is, is well, okay, we have this solution, and it's got some F minus, and the F minus is coming from the acid base. So what it's asking us is, is well, how much calcium 2 plus can we add um, before this will precipitate based on the concentration of F minus we have from the HF. So what we need to do first is we need to get the concentration of, of F minus um, from the weak acid base equilibrium. So if we write the Ka in this case, the Ka for this equation is going to equal the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of F, F minus divided by the concentration of HF. And we can set up an ice table. As we normally would. And so initially what we're going to have is 0 0.060 molar of the HF. And we're going to have 0 molar of the H3O plus and 0 molar of the F minus. 
Now, if this acid, for example, if HF were a, a strong acid, we could just take that concentration of 0 0.06 molar and plug it into the F minus concentration on the left directly. The problem is, is that HF is not a strong acid, so only a small fraction of it will actually break apart, and therefore we have to calculate the F minus concentration based on the Ka. So what we're going to get is we're going to get minus x plus x and plus x for the change. So we're going to get 0 0.060 molar minus x, x, and x. So now if we plug everything into the KSP expression, we get 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4 is equal to x squared over 0 0.060 molar minus x. So now to go forward, we do our assumption, which... Um, in this case, it works because we have 0 0.060 molar, and then we divide by 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, we get more than 100, so that works. So we can actually just delete that minus x um, because we're going to assume it's so small that it will make a difference. So if we calculate x in this case, which is going to equal our F minus concentration, that is going to be 0 0.00458 molar which we can now bring up to here. So now what the KSP part of the expression is asking us is, well, if we have 0 0.00458 molar F minus, what concentration of calcium two plus will cause this thing to precipitate? We're basically looking for when is Q equal to KSP? At what X value is Q going to equal KSP? So if we set that up, we get 3.4 times 10 to the minus 10. This is going to equal x times 0 0.00458 molar squared. And then we can do our math. So if you solve for the x in this case, you're going to get the concentration of calcium 2 plus is equal to 1.62 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. Now, at this point, you're, you're basically done with the hard stuff. You've done your weak acid problem, you've done your KSP problem, and you're, many of you would probably just stop here and, and think, well, gee, I did the right thing, I got the right answer. But there's one problem. This thing is asking us for milligrams of calcium chloride. So right now what we have is we have a concentration of calcium 2+, plus, but we don't have a mass of calcium chloride. We have to start working in that direction. So the first thing we need to do is we really need to figure out how many moles of calcium 2 plus we have. And then from there, if we know moles of calcium 2 plus, we can figure out how many um, moles of calcium chloride we had and then how many milligrams we have. So to get the number of moles of calcium 2 plus, we take our, our 1.62 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per liter and we multiply this by the total solution volume. So we multiply this by 0 0.355 liters. And that's going to give us uh, 5.4, I'm sorry, 5.74 times 10 to the minus 6 moles of calcium 2 plus. Now we have to do a little bit of stoichiometry. So if we have 5.74 times 10 to the minus 6 moles of calcium 2 plus, we know that for every one mole of calcium 2 plus, there's one mole of calcium chloride. And then for every one mole of calcium chloride, there is um, 111 grams. And then the, the final step is we just say for every one gram, there's 1000 milligrams because the question wants milligrams. So our final answer for this is gonna be 0 0.637 milligrams. So what I did in this last step was, if you can get to the number of moles of calcium, we can backtrack to the number of moles of calcium chloride. And then once we know the number of moles of calcium chloride, we can then get the, the mass in milligrams. Now for those of you wondering how I, can, how I know this one-to-one -one ratio, you have to remember that calcium chloride is a soluble salt. Uh, if you look at your solubility rules, calcium chloride is soluble. So when you dissolve calcium chloride in water, it's going to for every one mole of calcium chloride, there's going to be one mole of calcium and two moles of chloride. So that's how I knew my stoichiometry there. In the last problem, we're going to look at 
um, a solubility uh, a solubility problem that doesn't involve uh, stuff from chapter 16. So in this problem, it says magnesium sulfate is added to 378 milliliters of a 0 0.050 molar solution of sodium hydroxide until a precipitate forms. How many grams of magnesium sulfate were added? And then it says the KSP for magnesium hydroxide is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11. So, and then finally, it says assume the volume does not change upon adding magnesium sulfate. So let's just kind of draw this out schematically so that we know what's going on. So what we do, what we have is we basically have a solution of 0 0.05 molar um, OH minus. And to that, we're adding magnesium 2 plus, which is coming from magnesium sulfate. So uh, keep in mind that magnesium sulfate is a soluble salt. So when you put it into the solution, it's going to dissolve, forming magnesium 2 plus and SO4 2 minus in solution. And now the question is basically saying, hey, how much of this magnesium 2 plus do we have to add in order to get a precipitate to form? So this is very similar to the previous problem, and it's kind of like the setup for a fractional precipitation. So the first thing we'll do is let's write down our um, KSP equation. So we have magnesium hydroxide solid, which is going back and forth with magnesium 2 plus aqueous plus 2 OH minus aqueous. And so then we can write down our KSP expression, which is that KSP is equal to the magnesium 2 plus times the concentration of OH minus squared. And what we're basically saying is, well, if we've got 0 0.050 molar OH minus, and the KSP is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11, at what concentration will this thing equal, will Q equal KSP? So basically what we're saying is, when, when will Q equal KSP at? What value of X will that be true? And then when that, when we hit that, when we hit Q equals KSP, we'll form a precipitate. So that, that's what the problem is basically asking for. So the X in this case is going to equal um, 7.2 times 10 to the minus 9 molar um, of the magnesium 2 plus. And so, so that gets us to a concentration of magnesium 2 plus. Remember from up here that uh, the X is we're plugging in for magnesium 2 plus. Now the next part of this is to actually answer the question. So it says how many grams of magnesium sulfate were added? So we don't, they don't want a molar concentration. They want a mass of magnesium sulfate. So we have to do something similar to the last problem. What we basically have is we have 7.29 times 10 to the minus 9 moles of magnesium 2 plus for every 1 liter. So to get rid of the bottom part, we're going to multiply by 0 0.378 liters. Um, and what that's going to do is that's going to get rid of uh, the liters and get us to just moles of magnesium 2 plus. So um, now the reason why I can use the 378 mils is because it says that there's no volume change upon adding the magnesium sulfate. So we can use that volume as is. And then it just becomes a matter of doing some stoichiometry. So we know that for every one mole of magnesium 2 plus, there's one mole of magnesium sulfate. Uh, we know this because magnesium sulfate is a soluble salt. So when it goes into solution, it breaks up into one magnesium 2 plus and one SO4 2 minus. And then for every one mole of magnesium sulfate, it gives us a molecular weight of 120.4 grams. So the answer to this problem is going to be 3.27 times 10 to the minus 9th grams of the magnesium sulfate solid. So these show you some different types of problems um, that you might see on the exam uh, and that you should be ready for. So you can see the calculation part and then at the very end you got to make sure that you answer the question that we're asking.